So hello and welcome to the latest edition of You Are My Borough, the uh, Middlesbrough video cast, podcast, however you're watching or listening to us. Um, I'm joined as ever by my fellow Northern Echo writer, Dom Shaw, and I'm glad to say, Dom, football is back. We've had the, uh, well, pretty much bore draw for England and Ukraine, then the excitement of Tuesday night in beating Scotland. But it, in terms of Borough, we're back uh, on Saturday, heading to Blackburn, um, and we're going to talk all things Blackburn. We're going to talk about what Michael Carrick's been saying at his press conference today. We're going to talk about what Michael Carrick might or might not do with his team at Blackburn, because probably for the first time really this season, that's a really interesting one. Loads of options, uh, and it'll be easy to see how he's done that. A couple of bits of housekeeping. Um, if you're watching us on the YouTube channel, then please like, comment, and subscribe underneath. If you're um, listening to us on one of the various podcast outlets, um, then again, subscribe away and make sure you keep on top of when the new ones drop. If you haven't already seen it, uh, Dom did a special at the start of the week with former Borough player Josh Walker. That is a really good watch slash listen, however you want to do it. Um, I thoroughly recommend if you haven't seen that, that you give it a go. I uh, thought that was a really enlightening chat with Josh. But Dom, all things back to the championship, all re roads lead to Blackburn. Big old weekend, isn't it? I mean, you know, however you dress it up, I know we can say we're only five games in, we're only this, we're only that, but it feels like a big game. Yeah, I think the next two, I think Blackburn and Chef Wed. Um, we were having a chat about this earlier this week, weren't we? Yeah. Uh, if, if, if it feels like, you, I mean, really, you, you want to get this this point now, the blatantly obvious. You, you want to be getting a win from that. I think you should be getting a win from one of those two yeah. games. Now, Blackburn... Inconsistent start by all accounts. Those who are watching him say that performances have been better than results. Have won two, um, lost two, drawn one. Um, but Sheffield Wednesday have had um, oh, I mean, did you see their owner's yeah. statement earlier this oh, week? Yeah, I, I started reading it. I've got to get oh, on the, I gave, gave I was up before I got the end. It was about 25 pages. Yeah, uh, so they're a mess, aren't they? I mean, we'll have a chat about that after Blackburn, but but I think, um, the the, the they're not two terrible games for Borough, I don't think. And I know we say that on the back of a game against QPR, which on paper had the look of a of a of the exactly the kind of fixture you wanted, mm -hmm. really. Um well, that's been one of the worries about the start of the season, hasn't it? That for all been, Borough haven't won a game yet, they haven't really played anyone. So the worry is that if another two games against sides who, let's be honest, are unlikely to be challenging for the title come the end of the season, go by and Borough still haven't got that first win, then all of a sudden you are starting thinking, well. Where's this win going to come from? Because there's some much tougher games kind of looming on the horizon further down in the autumn. When yeah, you were with it. Michael Carrick today, how how was the general mood there? I mean, you know, obviously it's off the back of the international break and the press descent today, everybody back, focus starts switching towards the next game. How how did you feel the kind of just general mood of things was A at Rockcliffe and, and B from Carrick himself? Well, Carrick was, you know, it was basically a lot of what he said in the last few weeks, where despite the fact results clearly haven't been great and clearly haven't aren't good enough, um, he's convinced was the word he used today that uh, that, that things will change and that Burr will, will, will pick up. Um, he talked about how he's seen a lot of good signs in the opening weeks of the season. Uh, training during the national break has been positive, despite really that deflating defeat that went into the break at home to QPR. Um, and, and and he said, in his words, that the stats back up my eyes in telling me that things are going to turn around soon. Um, now, obviously, Carrick, everyone knows, you know, everyone knows in football, it's results that dictate the mood, isn't it? And dictate the, the general feeling around the club. So Carrick knows only too well, I guess, that 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 sort of talk can only last so long, can't it? Yeah, at, at yeah. One stage, sooner rather than later, you need to start turning those encouraging signs into positive results. Um, I wasn't at QPR, so I can't comment on that, but that sounded and read and, and looked by uh, yeah. listening to the second half of the game and speaking to those afterwards, that sounded very flat. Um, the, the Huddersfield game was promising, the, which we've talked about. The Bolton Cup yeah. game was promising and the field yeah. there was, you know, let's kick on from that. But then after both those promising displays, the Huddersfield game and the, the Bolton Cup tie, have been desperately disappointing displays. West Brom defeat and QPR defeat. So I think clearly there needs to be some consistency. But Borough also, you know, Car you know, Carrick is, if Carrick is uh, encouraged by the stats and, and by, you know, the things that his coaching staff are reading, they need to find a way, this young team, to, 
to start to, to learn how to win games, don't they? I think yeah. that, that's clearly key. Yeah, I mean, that that's exactly it, isn't it? I mean, it, to be fair to Carrick, I think he's right. You know, if, on, on a lot of the underlying statistics, Borough are not the worst team in the league. They're not one of the worst three teams in the league. But like you say, you know, that's fine to take a little bit of solace from. But ultimately, it doesn't matter if you're losing matches, does it? And, and you know, you, you're right. It's probably only the Huddersfield game in the league this season where you could make a really convincing argument that Borough deserved an awful lot more than they've got. Um, so clearly that needs to change this weekend. Um, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get on to the likely team and everything in a minute, but any kind of burning issues from the press conference, any surprises, any, any kind of key takeaways? Well, Marcus Force missed that QPR game with, with an yeah. injury that ruled him out the international break. He's back in training. Uh, Carrick said he's been yeah. training in the last day or two. So whether he'll be ready, um, is it, it, not, not clear. Tommy Smith has suffered a recurrence of that injury he suffered in the summer. Um, so which is a blow, isn't it? Yeah, you know, which, which has to be seen as a blow. I mean, I know, um, you know, the, the general mood seemed to be look, you know, it's not a really serious thing, but the fact that he was out for that big chunk of time, let's be honest, Burham missed him. He comes back, um, and obviously he's out again, and still no Dyke Steel, which obviously exacerbates the issue, yeah. Yeah, and Dyke Steel isn't close by, by you know, judging what Carrick said today. Um, so you would expect it to be McNair unless he plays Vandenberg there, but you, it's, it's yeah. one of them two, obviously. And then the other thing, although he's, he's not going to be ready on Saturday, clearly, Matt Clark is back in training and yes. Carrick talked at length. Which is kind of the ultimate forgotten man, really, through North Hall's yeah, own, isn't it? Um, he hasn't, it, 1st of October last year was his last appearance for Borough, wow. and, and Carrick talked about the drive and positivity really of him to, to, to manage to stay positive throughout that difficult time. Because from what I gather, it wasn't that Clark suffered an injury where a physio says to him, right, you've done this. You're going to, you're going to be out for nine, 10 months. You get your head around yeah. that. Which um, in some ways it's easier, is. isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. It's the yeah. It's been the uncertainty really of trying to get the bottom of this problematic back issue that's plagued him, but he's back in training. Carrick said um, clearly he's not going to be rushed and that they, they want to make sure that, he doesn't um, suffer any setbacks, and 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 uh, his his progress now is is always is all forward. So, fingers crossed. You know, in the weeks, months down the line, Clark can can get back in, and we can see the player who's made you know hundreds of of football yeah. league appearances and 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 impressed in the early signs of his time here. And, and I mean, you know, like with McNair now, you know, having spent the season at fullback at the moment, is still probably. The own, you know, the cover for Smith, if you like, a fullback. Clark could potentially be needed because centre half, if, if you take a McNair out of it to a degree, they're not overflowing with centre half options, but no, no. Um, I mean Vandenberg, you would expect to be third yeah. and be, be, be next. I, I would imagine Vandenberg would be ahead of McNair in the centre half pecking order now. Um Although we haven't really had the opportunity to see, have we? Because Fry and Lenahan yeah, yeah. it'll be interesting to see. Um because obviously Bangura signed, didn't he? And and he wasn't available mm-hmm. for the QPR game. Be interesting to see how that plays out left back. Because I think Engels had a tough start. Yeah, yeah. It's not it's safe to say he's not at the ground running, has he? Yeah. Now you know. I, I think the feeling around the club when he came in was he's our stick on nailed on left back. So I suspect Carrick will give him a little bit of time, and he, he's potentially one of the players where hopefully this international break will have helped in terms of yeah. settling in acclimatise and get a bit more in tune with what Carrick wants. Because I think the surprise with Engel is um, he hasn't looked that attacking so far, has he? When he came in, all the talk was he's got all these assists. He started out as a winger, then dropped back. Uh, you know, he, he is Ryan Giles Mark two. You know, listen, not necessarily in terms of raw ability, but in terms of what he will hopefully bring to this player. Yeah. yeah, and that's what we've not seen, isn't it? Yeah, um, and and Bangura again is similar to that, isn't he? You know, started as yeah. a winger, went back, um, very highly rated. The fine odd where he started out wanted him back last year, but he was desperate to come to England. So I think it'll be interesting to see how that dynamic plays out. And also, I think the other thing with Engel is, although although we haven't seen the best of him so far, clearly. It's never helped, is it, when a new new signing comes into a team that is clearly struggling. Um, yeah, still finding its way. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, I think hopefully in the next few weeks and months we'll see how things play out there. But again, you, you talked there about the you know the opportunity to settle. Greenwood and, and O'Brien have both had that two weeks now on the training ground, haven't they? You wonder whether he'll put them in because 
that QPR game, the manner of that defeat, you know, on the back of that, you would expect changes, wouldn't you, on Saturday? Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about the team and, and a bit of a thought of what we had. Let's make the assumption that McNair plays at right back and Carrick sticks with Engel at left back, which I think is probably a pretty safe guess. So the back four then pretty much picks itself, obviously, Dieng in goal. What happens further forward, as you alluded to, is interesting because you would you would suspect there'll be a really strong desire to get Greenwood and O'Brien into that team. And yet, if Carrick sticks with his 4-2-3-1 formation that he's kind of played all the way through so far, that's very hard to see how you do that without dropping either Housen or Hackney. So are we looking at more of a switch to a 4-3-3 where you potentially get both Greenwood and O'Brien into the team? You know, again, Carrick's talked about the flexibility in his squad now. Um, you know, is, is this the game where we're going to see something of a move away from what we've seen from him so far? I suspect it probably might be. And I think you do too, don't you? Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't spread. Because I, I, Lewis O'Brien, we talked about this in the last vid, didn't we? Lewis O'Brien doesn't strike me as a player who's come in as cover in midfield. He was one no. of the standout players in the Championship in midfield a couple of seasons ago. He, he was wanted by several clubs, as we've talked about. He's, he's come in to play, hasn't he? He's a midfielder. Now, he's not going to drop Hayden Hackney. Carrick, at his press conference on Thursday, was talking about how he thought Hackney was the best player on the pitch playing for the Eng England under-21s. Yeah. This week. He's not going to drop Hackney. We know how... Whenever Housen's not in the team, you see how important he is to the cause, don't you? So, I, so I'd be amazed if he dropped Housen, which does make you then wonder, is he going to change to, to more of a three? Um, and, and he did talk, Carrick, a couple of weeks ago at his press conference about... Not necessarily a plan B, but how the, the 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 squad and the signings and the versatility of the players who've come in have, have given him the, the 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 option of doing things a bit differently. Um, yeah. Now that doesn't obviously necessarily mean the shape's going to change, does it? But but uh, yeah, I think over the next couple of weeks we're clearly going to get an indication of how O'Brien manages to fit in. It wouldn't surprise me yeah. if it was more of a three. Um, I could see that. I could see that because I think, right, I think Hackney's in, you know, got himself into a position now where he's largely undroppable. I think you're absolutely bang on. Housen, if it was a home game and Borough really had the wind in their sails and were flying and were, were you know, were, were purring in attack, et cetera, et cetera, <clears throat> maybe then you consider leaving Hackney out and almost going, you know, ultra gung ho with with Hackney and O'Brien as your two centre mids. And, and, and you know, if the back doors open a little bit, so be it, because you're going to cause teams a whole host of problems. Away at Blackburn in a game, Borough need to win because they haven't got a win on the board yet. I don't think that that's the time to even consider doing that. So I'm with you. I'd be very surprised if Housen didn't play. So then if you're going to start O'Brien, I think it has to be a three. And that then is interesting going forward because... You know, that that yeah. that three should work. There's no reason why those three should not be able to play as a three. What I would say is... It's a pretty narrow three in a side where McNair is not exactly going to be a bombing on overlapping right back. And from what we've seen so far, for all the angle further down the line might be, we haven't seen that from him yet. So I wonder if that is the formation and, and they go with that three, then does that make it more likely that we see, say, Isaiah Jones maybe to give a bit of genuine width on one of the flanks, maybe with Greenwood on the other? I know we've gone Greenwood and McGree on, on this graphic, but... That would be my only concern with that as a three, that it's narrow, isn't it? You need yeah. a bit of width somewhere then. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, when you mentioned the fullbacks there, you know, clearly last 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 season, the success, Ryan Giles clearly had such success bombing on. But what made it successful, I think, was the fact that Smith on the other side obviously tucked in and covered yeah. and, and almost became a three when, when Giles went forward. And you also um, had McGree and Force, who were more than willing to tuck in as well. It's not like you had... Disciplined, you know, understood. Where they would have yeah. been wanting to make the same run, yeah. Um, I, I think the one interesting dynamic, when you look at the midfield there, is Dan Barlaser, because he, he came in January and, you know, we expected big things from him, really, after his yeah. success at Rotherham. He struggled to get in in the back end of last season, completely understandable given the, given the form of Houghton and Hackney. Um, but he's now had a full pre-season and, and you could make the case that he's arguably slipped further down the pecking order. 
yeah. after O'Brien's arrival. If, if, unless... I mean, unless we need, we need to see, how, yeah, we need to see how O'Brien appears, don't we? Exactly. We need to see exactly what the thought process is with O'Brien, exactly how it is. But, but, but I'm with you. It, it, it feels like a signing that Borough have made because they think he can, you know, make a pretty sharpish impact on the first team. Um, and you're right, if that's the case, then... You know, Bar Laser does drop down that little bit more, probably. I mean, and it's the, interesting. The one position and the one player we haven't mentioned in all of this discussion so far is Latalath up front, because at the minute it feels like, unless you're going to throw an absolute curveball and, and throw Josh Corbin in, he pretty much picks himself, doesn't he? For all the talk of strikers all summer, but I have kind of ended in a situation where at the moment it feels like the number nine picks himself, whether it's scoring or not. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and y- you would hope that that might change if Coburn makes an impact from the bench yeah. and, and grabs the ball. But yeah, absolutely. Clearly, when you when you look at the team now and go through the team, there are certain players where even even despite Borough's disappointing start, you know are going to play, don't you? Lenahan, mm. Fry, Hackney. Yeah. You would have probably yeah. put McGree in that last season. I, it, uh, you know, I think that's yeah, been a surprise to everyone that season. McGree hasn't played this season. Yang, obviously, and yeah. that latter lap. And Latte Lath, yeah, at the minute you'd put Latte Lath in there. Um, now, I think it's been an encouraging start from him, but, uh, you know, you're, you're asking a lot, aren't you, from a striker who's getting used to a new league and a new country and a new culture and a new and a new team, clearly. Yeah, and I think, I think the issue is that, you know, last season, I think we talked about this on innumerable vids, Yes, Cameron Archer was fantastic. He did a brilliant job in the second half of the season. You know, he's got his, his move. He, he looks like he's going to take the Premier League like a fish to water, et cetera, et cetera. But it didn't matter too much if he wasn't scoring a load of goals because you same had Tuba. It was the same with Tuba. Behind it. I think the issue this season is if Latalath doesn't score a dozen 15 goals, you'd ideally want 20, but let's, you know, a dozen 15. Is there enough goals in the rest of that midfield? That would be the worry. Now, Greenwood, I don't know. Clearly, you know, it's we've seen bits of him. He's an unknown quantity in terms of how good he's going to be, exactly where he's going to play. Maybe he will score 15 goals from a kind of attack and wide position or whatever. Um, but it's hard to see him agree getting to that kind of number. For all that he can ping one in from anywhere on the pitch every now and then, it's hard to see Hackney getting to that number. Um, Housen's clearly not going to. Force might, I guess, if he was to play every week. But that, for me, is the worry that this season it feels a lot more that you need Burren need that central striker, whether it be Latalath, whether it be Corbett, whether it be a combination of the two, really to get 20 goals, you know, in that area of the pitch this season. And, and the interesting thing there is Carrick had stressed that exact point, hadn't he, when losing Akpom, he'd stressed the exact point of not necessarily having someone who's going to score 20, 30 goals, but but spreading it out and and, and mm. sharing that load. And yet when you go through all the players like that, you do wonder where those goals are going to come from. Isaiah Jones, even when he was at his best, you know, wasn't clearly he lays on a lot of chances and had a lot mm. of assists, but didn't score a lot of goals. So there we've got is clearly got an eye for goal. But for a young winger just coming into the league, it's you're asking a lot if you going to hope for any more than what, you know, getting into double figures yeah. for him. So you do need people like McGree and Greenwood and Hackney and, and, yeah. and O'Brien to to chip in, don't you? Colburn, I mean, yeah. you know, Colburn's a player who a couple of weeks ago was going out on loan and yet now, when you when you go through everyone there, he's, he's clearly got an important role to play. I think Greenwood's an exciting one because... Um... You know, he's he's not the kind of completely unpro- unproven loan sign, has he, that clubs in the championship, you know, the young lad at Chelsea who's 20-year-old who's gone to Sunderland up front, could be absolutely anything, but is clearly at, at, a, at a really, really early stage of his career. Greenwood's that little bit further on than that, isn't he? You know, he, he had the breakthrough um, at Sunderland. He then obviously went to Arsenal. He's had the chances at Leeds. Yes, he hasn't probably kicked on as he would have hoped, but... It feels like this is a big season for him and it's a big chance for Borough to hopefully get the absolute best out of him at a time in his career when, you know, he's not just start now, is he? I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and, and I think we talked about this on the last vid we did where we, we'd spoken to Greenwood at Rockcliffe and he was asked about it because obviously Jesse Marsh played him in midfield, didn't he? Um, mm. and, and he was asked about 
kind of his best position and his and his role and without without question without any hesitation without any pause I said I'm a number 10 and a striker and then talked about how he like he likes having shots on goal he likes scoring goals so he he clearly sees his kind of main attribute really as 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 being a goal scorer um, and he was prolific, wasn't he? Coming through the ranks as a kid, obviously got his move to Arsenal from Sunderland yeah. when he was what sixteen, and then had a brilliant first. At, at his time, when pretty much every big club in the country was wanting him. In fairness, I mean that was a real bun fight to get him. You know, um, it, it was a time when Sunderland were really being assets in terms of their best young players, but he was seen as the best of them without a yeah. shadow of a doubt. So, so I, I completely agree with you. That that feels that has the look, and hopefully this turns out to be the case of a loan move that could and should benefit everyone involved. Mm. Um, Greenwood, you know, what age he is, 20, 21, he's, he's going to come in, you would think, desperate to prove a point, because this really is, is going to be his first season, if, if this does prove to be the case, of playing regularly. He's been in and out and on the fringes, hasn't he, at Leeds, for two or three seasons, whereas yeah. now he's clearly going to be an important first-team player. Um, and And... You know, like several of the other players, he's a young player who's clearly going to have to step up and handle that responsibility, isn't he? Mm. And so you, you touched on it a little bit at the start, but what, what are we what are we thinking with Blackburn? I mean, it it feels like they're not quite the team probably that they were for a big chunk of last season. They obviously lost Brereton. Um, you know, money has has once again been an issue there. I don't think there was very much, if anything at all, to invest. You know, the, there was suggestion at one stage in the summer that Thomason might be willing to walk away because. The money wasn't necessarily there. Um, they've obviously made a better start than Borough points wise, but um, wh where do you see where do you see Blackburn kind of at, and and what the challenge? They were a funny one last year, weren't they? Because they were, they were they were in the top six for the vast majority of the season. The vast majority, I think, if you looked back at the week spent in the top six, they'd be up there with 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 most, weren't they? And yet. They, Kind yeah. of felt inevitable that they weren't going to make all the way through the season. You were just mm. kind of waiting for them to fall away, weren't you? And they ended up finishing seventh, and I think they missed out on goal difference. But when yeah. when the team is up there but has as poor a goal difference as Blackburn had, I, I do often think that's telling. Mm. Um, the story all through the first half of the season was that they were in a false position in terms of their XG, in terms of shots created, in terms of every statistical kind of factor. But in fairness to them, they were winning games. They were there, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? But, but it did drop away. As I say, Brereton gone, Dak gone. Um, but here's a bit of cliche territory. He would park, you know, ne never the easiest place to go. Always seems to me like it's wet when you go there. I don't think it's necessarily meant to be this weekend. But it's one of yeah. those grounds, isn't it, where generally half full, little bit of an atmosphere but most of the atmosphere tends to come the away and certainly when Borough go there and, and, and that's likely to be the case again this weekend isn't it with a you know another sold out away end which is just becoming commonplace now but um yeah it's 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 um it, it has the feel of one of those classic championship games where flick 10 coins and it could be a different result every time you know what I mean yeah and and Thinking of Blackburn away, to, you know, for all a lot has been made, understandably, of the fact Borough have clearly lost a lot of, of real talent over the summer. Akpom, Archer, Ramsey. Although they still had Tuber Akpom, clearly at this stage, when they won at Blackburn in December, was it, what, three or four days after Christmas yeah. last year? They won 2-1, yeah. they came back from behind. It was at the time when, I think it might have been the first game when he played Crooks as a centre-forward, maybe, yes. or he might have done it the week before. But... um. But even before Archer and Ramsey came in, Borough, Borough were purring under Carrick, weren't they? And they were playing the type of attacking football that that was that yeah. was blowing teams away. And I, and I think that's really an indication that although, and like clearly, as I say, Tuber Akpom was there then, but that was before Archer and Ramsey came in. And and the hope is that Borough can kind of rediscover some form like that. It, you know, it yeah. wasn't as though the lone players who came in in January transformed Borough's season. Turned they everything clearly, completely upside down. They no. clearly added to it. And and I thought that performance at Blackburn, they were, I'm, I'm, they were one nil down at half time, weren't they? And, and it just felt inevitable that Borough were going to turn it round. Yeah. And there was a there was a jam packed away end. I remember Carrick talking afterwards because his son was in there, and Carrick was saying, "When you see an away end like that, it just makes you want to be in it." And and yeah. that you could you could sense the momentum building then, couldn't you? Around around Borough last season, mm. um, you just kind of a reminder, really, that um, 
you know, what Borough were last season was before Archer and Ramsey came in and, and yeah, before, yeah, yeah. you know, a couple of months before they went to Sheffield United and blew them away. Um, I think that's a good point. And, and I think I think it's so, I think it's, you know, it, it, um, listen, you, you know, you can't write any games off in this league. The first five games were played, they've been very disappointing. Clearly, everyone associated with Borough would have wanted more points than they've got. But, um it does feel that this is a logical reset now, isn't it? That, you know, again, let's go into cliche territory. The season starts here. Um, you know, it's if Borough can go and win at Blackburn and and look anything like, like you say, the side that they were on their travels when things were going great last season, then an awful lot of the worries, fears, anxiety, negativity, whatever, that, that has kind of built steadily during this first month of the season will go, won't it? It's not going to take an awful lot to get this back on track. No, and and I asked Carrick on Thursday, did you know, did, did the international break come at a good time for you? And he wasn't really having that. And I, and I said to him, does this feel like almost the start of the season? And he wasn't really having that. But I think both are true. I think yeah, I do. there's no doubt that the international break came at a good time for Borough. I think Borough needed that that chance to take yeah. stock, get the new signing settled in and almost draw a line under the first five games of the season. And with that in mind, I, I do think it's almost like you say, you can't you can't pretend those first five games haven't happened. But right, let's put it behind us. Let's f- ignore that league table and, and start now. We've had a couple of weeks to settle the squad. We haven't got any uncertainty of the transfer window and comings and goings. This is what we know we're dealing with. Um, <clears throat> so I do think it has that feel. And and you just hope, if you can get four points from the next two games, Blackburn and Sheffield yeah. Wednesday, well, well, you're on your way then, aren't you? And then it sets yeah, exactly. you up for that great-looking Southampton game, which which ordinarily I'd say has a look of a daunting fixture. But when I saw them a couple of weeks ago, they were, they were absolutely yeah. to bits by Sunderland. So you never know what yeah. to expect from them. But yeah, so, come on then. Prediction. Really Prediction time. What 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 are, what are you thinking? Uh, I think I think draw. That's properly sitting on the fence, isn't it? But I, I, yeah, I think Borough, I think it'll be cagey, really. Blackburn have won one, lost one at home. I think Borough will go there and maybe, you know, look to be difficult to beat, really, and just try and go back to basics to get off the mark. I think 1-1 one, one draw. What do you reckon? I'm going to go 2-1 Borough. I'm going to, for once, I'm the positive one. It's very rare that. I'm well, going to go 2-1 Borough. I don't, think we've, I don't think we've ever predicted a defeat on here, have we? <laughs> it's I'll, like my... No, I, I will. We, we will at some point, probably. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think Borough will lose. I'll, I'll really put no, my head I on the don't. block here. I don't, I don't think don't. Borough will lose. Um, I'm going to go 2-1. I'll go them taking the lead through Greenwood. Instant impact. Blackburn equalise. And then here we go. A winner with five minutes left. You've mentioned him already in this pod. Crooks. Off the bench. Off the bench. 85th minute. Yeah. 2-1. Yeah. I'd take that. Um, yeah. I do fancy Borough to win yeah. a chef wed on Tuesday. I fancy. I think Borough. Borough. I think. I. I think Borough. It's, I think if Borough win at Blackburn, they definitely win a chef wed. I think yeah. the, the, the only way that becomes really tricky is if Borough have lost at Blackburn, and all of a sudden, you know, it's a very different conversation. Then, isn't it? It's another get defeat. But um, yeah, I, I think. Listen, um, you know, a chef wed looked like they were going to be a bit of a basket case at the start of the season, and nothing that I've seen thus far has detracted me from that. We'll get round to that more at the start of the week, but um, come on. So I'm going back to back away wins. Yeah, crisis, going, what crisis? You're going six points, I'm going four points. Just be we'll take either. We'll take be, either. Before we wrap up, then you, you were at Scotland, England midweek, um, yes, I was, and you were saying to me that that performance from Jude Bellingham was as good as. Watson I was I was playing, reckoning up, say. yeah. I was reckoning up. Um, I was having a little think. I was chatting with a couple of mates about it. Actually, I think it's the best individual display I've seen in England shirt since Rooney at Euro two thousand and four in Portugal. Um, the two games, wasn't it? Switzerland and Croatia, when he kind of exploded on the scene, it was just incredible. Um, I think it's the best individual display in an England shirt that I've seen since then. Um, he was. Utterly oh. brilliant for Bellingham. Um, if so many different things, just is 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 kind of ease in possession, the way he glides across. Um, but the, the the thing that stood out for me was, and um, 
that it was a it was a fantastic atmosphere. I mean, them booing that God save the king before the start. I've rarely heard a crowd as loud as that. And then that obviously riled the England fans who then got going themselves. So the atmosphere was brilliant. As you would expect, first 10, 15 minutes, Scotland's players were kind of flying all over, stepping into anything. As an aside, I thought England did brilliant in that first 10 minutes, just literally keeping possession. They weren't necessarily trying to do anything with the ball, but they just didn't let Scotland get it, which drew a bit of the sting out. But right from the word goal, whereas every other England player, when they got the ball, there was a Scotland player right in the face. Whenever Bellingham got the ball, he just seemed to have a a kind of zone of five yards around him where he had time and space to be able to literally just do as he pleased. Now, maybe a little of that with Scotland's players giving him too much respect, I don't know. But for me, it was just that he's he's at that level now where he's able to do that. He's able to make the runs. He's able to get the ball. He's able to dictate games. You know, his, his passing ability is clearly brilliant. He's got a goal in him. Um He's got to be the future of that England team for the next 10 years if all goes to plan, hasn't he? And 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 you build a team around that, you know. I mean, and and it, it's you know, it's exciting. It's 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 we we've had very good players in the last 10, 15 years, haven't we? You know, for all that there might be grumblings that they haven't quite got over that last hurdle, the strides that have been made under Southgate are still clear to see. What we've never had really in my lifetime, and probably even Rooney Beckham. Uh, is a, a player who genuinely could be the best player in the world, Ballon d'Or winner, Messi Ronaldo level. I think Bellingham is that. I really do. I mean, well, listen, he's he's running the show for Real Madrid, so he's nearly there now. You know what I mean? But I think that's the first one who you you know he, he could be the world player of the year, unquestionably. You know what it reminded that's... me of watching him on Wednesday night. You know when you were a primary school kid. And you're in year three or year four, and someone came. Uh -huh. It was a year six, yeah. and it wasn't fair. Yeah. That that's yeah. what it, it looked like. He was playing with a different game with lads who were three yeah. or four years below himself. Um, yeah, did, like you no, said, yeah, the way he glides past them, and the, 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 yeah, I thought. Yeah, it was and I, I thought it was. I thought it was a good reminder because obviously, um, you know, the Ukraine game at the weekend was. You know, back to the dullest of dull England, really. It was, it, you know, it, 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 listen, it's not a bad result, really. What one all away in the context of the group, it's not a bad result, but it felt like a return to kind of bad old England days. I thought what Wednesday night, uh, Tuesday night rather, showed was Scotland have, have made some really good strides under Steve Clark and they're going to qualify for the tournament. And the Scottish fans are right to be getting excited about it, but th they're a they're a, they're a well-organised international side with no world-class players. England have world-class players. Um, you know, yes, Bellingham, but Saka, I thought, was really good. Rashford showed what he can do again. Kane's still Kane. You know, England have world-class players, and if they just get it right remotely, then they should be going to the European Championships next summer with, you know, with the expectation of getting deep into the knockout rounds and with every chance of actually going on and winning it because, you know, you've got a group of international teams like Scotland who will get to tournaments, will be really well organised, we are the breakdown, but ultimately have a level. You've got probably three or four that are better than that at the Euros and England are one of them, aren't they? When you talk there then, just to finish on Borough, about the best individual displays, do it? Do any immediately spring oh. to mind from Borough play? I mean, the, there's the Mendieta match talked about a lot, isn't there? Yeah. That Man United game clearly, you know, there's yeah. this Ravinelli's hat trick on his on his debut, which was just an exhibition in uh, an instinctive finishing, wasn't it? The the, the hammering of yeah. Manchester City was just a collective. Collective. In, I was going to say that that's a game that team, wasn't it wasn't an individual display. Obviously, the the European campaign, some fantastic moments, some fantastic team displays. But I don't think you'd say that there was one individual display in that entire run, really. That that absolutely shone out. Um, you know, the other one that springs to mind for me, Woodgate against Henri yes. at Arsenal. And Arsenal. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a really good one. There's yeah. a really good one. Um. Woodgate, yeah, Woodgate against Henri, you know, he was absolutely brilliant in that game, wasn't yeah. he? Yeah. I'm gonna I've got one. I've got one. Honestly, one of the one of the, I, I could give you a hundred guesses. And you <laughs> you're, not gonna, 
You know, for me covering Middlesbrough, I think, <laughs> I think it's it'll be up there with the three highest marks I think I've ever given a Borough player. I don't think I gave him a ten. I gave him a nine, but it was, it was right up there. You'll never guess. Well, you know what, what you know, you know what's come to mind when you've said that there. Come on, Diego Fabrini. No, remember his day. Remember his de- was it his debut? I and he scored two goals, and he was out. Yes. And then afterwards, he was showing the press the bit. What did he have on his boots? He had something printed on his boots. Was it his pet? Was it his pet yeah, dog? It was, yeah, it was, it was his dog something, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, give I'm, us a clue. I'm, I'm, give us a clue. Give us yeah. the era. I think Strachan. Strachan ish. Let me. I'm going to check while we're doing it here because I don't want to embarrass myself now. Um. I think I think it would be struck an ish. I think if you gave me the game, I'd get it. Yeah, I think you probably he's a, he's a striker and he's got a hat trick. I think. <laughs> um, stri- wasn't Dave Kitson? No, he not nope. a hat trick, was it? Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm maybe I'm lending you down, leading you down the garden path here by saying Strachan, but. I wonder, um, I wonder whether we still have any viewers or listeners with us at this point. But I feel I like wonder if we do. Yeah, I feel like I've got one Yellow more. Vossen, Yellow Vossen, Millwall. Oh, Millwall, Karanka. Karanka, yeah. of course yeah. it was. Of course, Yellow Vossen. Yeah, he scored the Yellow Vossen, yeah. Millwall. I think he had four excursions into the kind of final third that day. He scored three. <laughs> Literally everything he did, and there were screamers as well. Yeah. Um, absolute screamers, but random one-off Middlesbrough performances. Um, yeah, here we are. That, Yellow, I can't get that for Brini when I'm mind now. It sums it up. Yellow Vossen broke his goal duck in style with a first half hat trick as Middlesbrough thrashed Millwall 5-1. The Belgian striker signed on loan in September had failed to find the net in his previous 12 appearances. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to click now whether Dave Kitson ever go. scored a hat trick for Borough. Where the hell have I plucked that from? Didn't he score two that, um, PR, Dave Kitson? Isn't that a in funny the... one that plugged into your head though? But yeah, Yellow yeah. Boss and Millwall, I remember thinking, wow, that that was that was some performance. That, um, but I mean, listen, it, in the uh, yeah, in in the in the kind of Premier League days, you, you're obviously yeah, the, the Mendieta one stands out an awful long way, doesn't it? That was. Um, that was something else. Yeah, Viduka yeah. was very capable of producing incredible. Well, I was thinking that because Viduka was cla- and I, I was thinking, is there any standout games? I remember being at Birmingham when he scored that goal. I remember when he got the ball down yeah. the top line and turned in it in the top corner. Um, yeah, I remember being there that day. But yeah, there wasn't any kind of standout games at Spring of Mind with Viduka. Jimmy scored no. that trick at Blackburn, didn't he? When Borough won yes. 4 0 there. Yes. And I'll tell you another one, actually. Yakubu, when he tortured John Terry, when Borough beat Chelsea 3 0. Yeah. Yakubu absolutely took. I think that was yeah. Mourinho's, it was certainly his heaviest defeat at that stage. My, y- Yakubu's best performance for me, though, I, again, I, everything. I'm pretty, it came against Borough, didn't it, on the last day of the season Portsmouth, of Portsmouth. When they won 5 1, was it? Six. I think it yeah. got six. It was either five or six. He that day was. Utterly unbelievable. Like Borough were a shambles, don't get me wrong. Um, but but Yakubu that day, that's as good a, 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 a you know an attack player as you're gonna see. He, Borough literally could not get near him. But, but you're right, in a Borough shirt, that 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 um that Chelsea one would be his best. But anyway, well, there we, we, we I was we've, just we've led you down memory lane here. And I the, think the that's concluding... the only time Diego Fabrini, Yakubu, guys Commendieta and Dave Kitson will be involved yeah. in the same Borough conversation. And and basically, my takeaway from the week is that Jude Bellingham is the new Yale of Hossen. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm going to look back at that Diego Fabrini game now. He was unplayable. And then it's ah. one of them where when the dust settled, you think, well, hold on. Why yeah. is he being allowed to join Borough on loan if he's yeah, that yeah, good? Yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you kind of expect yeah. the imminent dip. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Well, maybe we'll talk. We'll be talking about one of them in that ilk uh, from Blackburn at the weekend. We shall see. Well, listen, we better wrap up. We've, uh, as I say, we've had a, we've had a. Like, please comment though with your one-off worries performance. Yeah. I'm sure there's a million and one we've missed. We'll, uh, we'll drop a few of the best ones into the next vid or the next pod, however you uh, listen or watch. But yeah, thanks very much. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you post burn pre chef wed for a dissection of what happened at Ewood Park and a look ahead to the trip to Hillsborough. For now, though, thanks for watching. You are my borough um, and have a good weekend.